Hello and welcome back to 4 Minutes. This week we take a look at how soft dollar bans could have a negative impact on some financial planning businesses by way of stopping marketing payments. But first, here's your weekly news roundup brought to you by MLC Wrap. New ASIC chairman Greg Medcraft said financial services providers will need to act as so-called gatekeepers and take more responsibility for the products reaching retail clients. Addressing the Financial Ombudsman Service, Medcraft said companies would also need to take part in any compensation issues which may follow. Assistant Treasurer Bill Shorten announced the proposal by the government that all providers of superannuation products and simple managed investment schemes adopt the new PDS format by 22nd of June 2012. These product providers would need to cut their PDSs to just eight pages and meet new content requirements. Lonsec will soon have a new parent company after Zurich announced the research house would be sold to Financial Research Holdings, which also intends to bring super ratings under its umbrella. The federal government announced maximum trio compensation levies would be lifted to $750,000, but only for funds with over $5.57 billion in assets, meaning smaller funds would pay less. A financial sector union survey found more than half of bank, insurance and financial services employees have seen customers steer towards financial products they may not have needed. FSU National Secretary Leon Carter claimed workers were under increasing pressure to sell financial products regardless of customer need. Meanwhile, APRADATA revealed super assets stood at $1.36 trillion at the end of March quarter, an 8.6% increase in the 12 months to March. Former AMP financial planning head of paraplanning, Andrew Kennedy, moved to Cominsure as new head of advice distribution. And Treasury Group has announced the appointment of its new CEO, with Andrew McGill, to succeed Mark Burgess. A group of investors in the distressed premium income fund have commenced urgent legal action against Brisbane-based fund manager Wellington Capital and its directors. Investors would seek to reverse certain changes made without unit holder approval. And finally, the Australian Institute of Management Salary Survey found finance and accounting professionals have received one of the highest pay increases, averaging 4.1%. However, the Institute said the wider finance, banking and insurance industry underperformed in the last financial year. In this week's Money Management, financial planners claim technology innovation on the opt-in front would not solve the main problems associated with the proposal. Mike Taylor takes a look at how major dealer groups feel about the Lonsec sale. And in our top story, Ashley McIntyre finds soft dollar bans could hurt financial planning practices by stopping marketing payments used for advertising, brochures and client seminars. For all the details on those stories and more, see tomorrow's issue of Money Management. Thank you for joining us this week. Bye for now.